What's the time? What's the time? What's the time? Then, then. What's the time? What's the time? What's the time? It's one o'clock. It's two o'clock. It's three o'clock. It's four o'clock. It's five o'clock. It's six o'clock. It's seven o'clock. It's eight o'clock. It's nine o'clock. It's ten o'clock. It's eleven o'clock. It's twelve o'clock. What's the time? 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 It's two thirty-five. It's two thirty-five. It's three o'clock. It's three o'clock. It's one thirty. It's five p.m. It's half past six. It's half past six. What's the time? 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 Viewers, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Flo Erax TV. This is how I start teaching my students time. I start with warm-up song, singing a song to bring them active. Most of them don't know how to read time because we know that they are students learning English as their second language. So we need to make it very interesting and very entertaining for them to really focus on what you're talking about or what you're teaching. So I always start this lesson of teaching time with the song. After the song, the next thing we're going to see in this video is the lesson about time. I'm going to be showing us PowerPoints about the lesson on time. And after that, you will see some engaging activities that I will project for them to see. And I will end it up with a very interesting game. This is the first time that you're tuning into my channel. You're most welcome to Flo Everett's TV. Let's get started. Start by this topic time is a little bit broad. I do not take just one week to teach them. No, I can take a month just to teach time. I have to break it down so that they will get a better understanding of it. So I always start first with the vocabulary, letting them know the vocabulary very well and bringing in activities, games, only with that vocabulary for just about one or two weeks. Then following week now, I will now engage them into activities like question and answer concerning time. And the last, they will now have to play indoors or outdoor games. So let's get started. First, I will let the student know about the minutes, hand and hour hand. The clock as itself, I will let them to understand the differences between the wrist watch and the wall clock. Because sometimes I used to ask them, what is this? You hear them saying clock, clock. No, it's not a clock. This is a wrist watch and that's the clock on the wall. Looking at this display we have, the rights represent past and the left represent two. So I will let them read with me five past, ten past, quarter past, twenty past, half past, quarter to, ten to, and so on. They will have to practice this over and over until they get used to the twelve of it. Those are vocabularies. You might think it's easy for you who knows English already, but student learning English as their second language is a whole lot of vocabulary for them to learn. So we do not have to rush with them. We need to take our time to explain this to them very well. Next, we have to teach them sentences or questions we used when talking about time. Excuse me, what time is it? The student will have to respond, it is o'clock. Looking at my display, it is one o'clock. The student will repeat after me, it is one o'clock. So from that, I will now have to ask that question again over and over until 12 times. So it sinks into their mind. So they will not get used to it. Like from my song, I, I was teaching, it's one o'clock, it's two o'clock, it's three o'clock, it's four o'clock. Just that's why it's always good to teach students with songs. So songs are not only meant for, for primary students or nursery students. Some mature songs can be sung in 
the classroom because it helps to, to remember your vocabulary so easily. So when I ask them what time is it, they will have to respond, it's 1 o'clock, it's 2 o'clock, it's 3 o'clock, until 12. The next, so I'll let them understand the differences. 12 a.m. It's midnight and I'll let them know that uh, one minute past 12 until 11.59, it's a.m. And from 12 p.m., which is also known as noon, until 11.59, that is p.m. So I will let them know the difference between a.m. and p.m. A.m. in the morning, p.m. in the evening. Next slide. I also let them to know the two ways to read the time or three ways. Two or three ways, yes. For instance, what time is it? Looking at my display, it's showing 2.30, 2 and dot with 3 and 0. That's the best and easiest way for them to remember reading the time. 2:30. But when we start, but I also try to tell them that you don't only need to only know that you also need to know alternatives. English language has got a lot of synonyms, many many ways we can call one thing. Yes, we can call one thing in different different ways. So do not only focus on one way. You can also learn the other. So I tell them we can call that word 2:30. We can also call it half past two, or we can also call it 30 minutes past two. So, but and then I'll ask them which one do you like to call best? Everyone will say 2 30 because it's very easy for them to, to remember, but that's still fine, it's okay. Looking at my clock, it's showing the hotel 300, or they can say 3 o'clock. If it is not specified whether it is a.m. or p.m., the best vocabulary to use there is o'clock, it's 3 o'clock, it's 4 o'clock, it's 5 o'clock. Like this. Next, after I, have, I must have taught them those vocabularies and sentences to use when talking about time, I will now test their understanding by showing them or giving them activities to test if they have understood, like question and answer. Remember, my class is mostly focused on conversation on that. So I will ask them, what time is it? It's five. It's five. It's five zero zero. It's five o'clock. It's five o'clock p.m. <laughs> the second choice can never be the right answer because five can mean anything. It doesn't show that it's talking about clock. So the best choice for this is actually the number three, which is it's five o'clock. What time is it? Another activity. What time is it? Is it one fifteen? Is it twelve fifteen? Is it 2.15? Of course it is 1.15. So I will give them more and more engaging activities like this. Answer the following questions. Now they can do this with your friends. I will divide them into, into pairs, two to each. Student A and student B. Student A will ask, what time do you get up? I can still be the student A, teacher A, and the student B. I'm talking with my student. I can give one or two examples using myself as A and they and, and talk with them. After they must have understood, then I now group them into two. So let's say I am A and the student is B. What time do you get up? I expect the student to answer, I get up at 7 o'clock. What time do you take a shower in in the evening or in the morning, in the afternoon, depending on the time. The student will have to respond. I take a shower at 8 p.m. Next, what time do you go to school? I go to school at 8 o'clock. Next, what time do you have lunch? I have lunch at 12 p.m. Some students might get confused and say 12 a.m. <laughs> so we have to correct them. 12 p.m. Next, what time do you eat dinner? Most of them like to use eat, but the correct word I would prefer is what time do you have dinner? I have dinner at 
they will have to respond 7 p.m. with my family. Next, what time do you go to bed? I go to bed at 9 p.m. Games, online game, a simple online game. Are you ready for the game? Remember, this lesson can be given to any level, any level, depending on the level of your student's English. Is it the elementary level, the intermediate level, the advanced level? It depends because with advanced or intermediate level, you can't give, be given that this is very easy. I think you have to give something more complicated. But with the student, like from the primary levels and even the matayong, which is a secondary level, that are still learning English. Not everyone is perfect in it. I think activities like this or games like this is, is okay for them. So let's go straight away with our game. The first one is... Okay. What time is it? Is it 3 o'clock? Is it 5 o'clock? Is it 9 o'clock? You give them one second or two seconds, two or three to guess. Of course, it is 9 o'clock. Well done. Next. What time is it? It's 10 past 10. It's 10 past 2. It's 10 to 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Time up. <laughs> What's the answer? It's 10 past 10. Well done. Next. What time is it? Is it half past 9? Is it half past eight? Is it half to nine? <laughs> so what's the right answer? One, two, three, four, five. Because it's half past eight. Well done. Next. What time is it? Is it 20 past 11? Is it 20 past 11? 10 is it 20 to 11 what time is it 1 2 3 4 5 of course it's 20 to 11 well done next what time is it is it quarter to 9 is it quarter past 9 is it quarter to three? One, two, three, four, five. Of course, it's quarter past nine. Well done. And of course, what time is it? Is it five to nine? Is it quarter to 11? Is it five past nine? It's five to nine. Well done. As simple as this, when they are versed with the lesson, activities like this is ABC for them. It's one plus one. It's very easy and very interesting. You can play this on and on and on and on with them. You can make as many multiple or many slides of different kinds of questions or questions relating to time for them to think and give the right answer. Okay guys, we've come to the end of this lesson. Have a nice day. Bye.